I'm just sitting through the demo on this Treasure Planet game. It's like, oh my gosh. He is indeed having the time of his life. He's jumping around. He's dancing around. He's kind of finding every single secret. Let's go. And then it ends. So soon. So quickly. Taken. Taken from us. Just like I will take my time until I count down. Hello everybody, welcome- oh well, I forgot to count out. 3, 2, 1! Hello everybody, welcome to the stream, this is the b and stream today on this fine 22nd of July, 2024. I hope you're having a wonderful week, and we'll have a wonderful week ahead of you. Uh, my week has been pretty alright, I've gotten stuff done. I've gotten some stuff done. That's great. Um, but also, I, uh, I've just been taking it a bit chill. And you know what we can take a bit chill with? Uh, this transition into the game, shall we? Shall we? I didn't even verify that, like, everything's working. I just assume it works. Yeah. Yeah, this is a- this is an assumption that it works. Cool. Okay. Into the game we go. Woo! Very, very nice. Very, very, very nice. Uh, so yeah, so oh no, I'm continuing on uh, Treasure Planet today. Treasure Planet being the uh, game by Magenta Software, um, aka Collectathon of Game. So uh, yeah, no, I I, I feel like uh, a bunch of people uh, definitely enjoy this game, and I think there's something somewhat interesting to uh, talk about it and show it off. We've already seen through the intros. I don't need to show the intros. You saw that last week, and if you didn't, then whoops, watch last week, because you probably are going to be like, well, I'm in the middle of that. Unless you're watching live on Twitch, in which case you're beholden to whatever the heck I do, but that's okay, because I've got this under control, I guess. Um, so, uh, anyway, uh, oh boy, we got some, some good, fun news in this week. News? Things to talk about. Topics of discussion. As well as also I get to talk about this game a little bit. Um, but I will gladly announce to the world, I have finished my Gran Turismo 4 Regrind. So, um, so for reference, uh, in the last stream, uh, we would have done the two levels on Montressa and the two levels on Spaceport and a boss fight. We will now continue to the legacy, the boat, if you will. Look at these characters who we've not seen before in the game, because why model and create all these characters in the game if... You know, like... <laughs> you're not even gonna... You know, talk to them, basically. That's always a problem, is that a lot of these movies started adding more and more and more of these little side characters. You'd usually have, like, a little kind of pet. There's always a pet in these, in these, uh, movies. And it's just like, how, how much can you actually bring them up in the game? The answer is very little. Dead. Very dead. He did not brace himself. Again, here's your 3D animation. This is 100% a trailer shot. I do love having wind sails despite being in space though. It just feels good, feels earnest. So anyway, so this is the third of the four walking around levels. This takes place on the ship itself, not on a planet. Or oh, I guess a spaceport wasn't really a Jim, planet. Here she is, the RLS Legacy. Isn't she grand? We'll sail where no it man be has gone before. Marshall. Well, no man that is except for Captain Flint. Oh, and his first mate, of course. Oh, and his entire crew of pirates. Well, that's a lot of people, actually. Yes. Uh, this level is, um, hmm, how would I describe it? Uh, irritating. Look at all these coins that are directly above me. I'm gonna have a fun time having to pick them all up. Also, hello there. So, cabin boy, there's an initiation test for new recruits to this crew. You think you can manage it? Manage it? What is he? Okay. I'm ready for anything you got, Bright Eyes. Oh, okay. So that's this test. That's right. You must collect the things. Follow the arrow and collect the things. I remember from memory, these are actually in random positions. 
So there's times when you might actually have an easier go at this than otherwise, but you got five minutes, you got plenty of time. Uh, jump up on the on the side here. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, double jumps. Um, watch out for that thing. Sure. And I should be able to collect these flags. Unfortunately, you can see that, uh, yeah, they're all over the place. They're all over the shop. And you're going to have to do a lot of climbing in order to get them, so... I don't think there's a lot to really discuss about the gameplay. I think best I can say is, oh yeah, yeah, also, if you want to keep going a little bit higher, one, good luck with the camera angle here, and two, this is your one way up. Just that tad bit further up, and yes, there is indeed one more level above this, which I think there's another, yeah, there's another rope right next to me. But I don't need to go up there, because I need to go over there. Oh, oh my gosh, yeah, you see what I mean? It's like, jeez. Listen, okay, I know I praised the level in uh, Toy Story 2, the construction yard level, um, and the, uh, the lift top level. For these, uh, you know, wonderful vertical sections of the game. This is, a uh, this is a little bit excessive here. Because it's kind of precarious the whole time. Oh, look at all these flags just appearing next to each other. Sure, I'll accept it. Oh, we gotta go further up. There you go. Um, but yeah. No, I, I won't knock it too hard, but it's like, oh, I wish there was, like, more ways to climb up higher in this level. Because your verticality is entirely stuck to these ladders. You don't have these automatic platforms that move you up or the quick lifts in uh, the, uh, the lift top level. Or at least the general pace that you have in... Oh, hi there. The general pace that you have in, uh... You know, the, the Bugs Life level, the tree level. It's like, nope. Do you like how it also hid all the coins, so you can't just, like, casually be picking up ones as you're going along here? At least there's no full damage. How far down are we going? Are we, okay, there. I was like, uh... well, we're just at half the time, and I have one singular flag to go, which is right at the beginning. Very nice. Uh, kind of at the beginning. Oh, really? Okay, that wasn't <laughs> wasn't quite at the beginning. That's kind of you got to climb up here just to get height to get onto the muscle. Hi there. How you doing? How you doing? Jeez. Um, but yeah. <laughs> oh well. Uh, and then we're good. We've got it. We've got him in the bag. Here we go. Just throw that out there. Well, cabin boy. You may have survived yourself this trinket. But I'd still watch my step if I was you. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Uh, of course, falling off is uh, bad for your health. You don't want to do it. Uh, but we've got the usual array of collecting way too much goodie. Way too many goodies. I didn't count how many uh, treasures and things we needed to get. So, I'm hoping the usual 300 again. I'll know by the end. 100%. But, uh, yeah, this is gonna be fun, because it's like, you can see there's a lot of, like, coins and stuff floating up in the air. And it's just all... here. All this, like, part here. It's just all climbing. All, like, all these extra coins and stuff. Fortunately, it's not at the ends of these, say, of, of these masks too often, but... It's at the end of this one. Yeah, like, look at that, come on. This is like visually kind of weird as well, because it's just some walking off into space. This is the literal nose of the ship. The wacky, like the depth of the camera angle shows exactly like, oh yeah. Hey, at least we got the Spyro approach of a uh, you know, LOD swapping a large object so we don't have just a fog. You can't see the ship, it's in the fog. And 
yes. There, there is still a fair bit to the ship. It's not just this casual, like, above ground part. It's like, you know, the levels usually exist in kind of two stages. So, uh, this one's no different, so. Anyway, let's chat about today's topic, uh, or one of today's topics. Um, I think the first one is probably something that, uh, hilariously, I think everyone is probably well acquainted with. And if you're bored with this, uh, then, uh, it's only gonna ever show up this week. But what a curious incident. The, uh, the crowd strike issue of, uh, um, which day in particular would this have been? This would have been on Friday, the 19th of July. The day when crowd strike, um... Tested in prod, we'll say, we'll say as a, a summary, um, although maybe not the most accurate statement, but okay. So, CrowdStrike, for those who are, are not aware, or for the historical viewers who might be waking up going, oh, what's going on here? Um, CrowdStrike is a, uh, a uh, service, um, or a company that provides a service called CrowdStrike, um, which basically is a security monitoring platform for enterprise uh, computers. Basically, if you've got a computer on Enterprise, I'm going to see if I can climb up all the way, by the way, and uh, we'll, we'll maybe backpedal down below, because if I ever miss above, then I'll be able to, like, use this ledge below to get those kinds of goodies there. Um, if you ever use a computer in the Enterprise, uh, CrowdStrike is a, uh, a tool a lot of uh, Enterprises will use to basically go, hi, yeah, you know, we monitor for unwanted network traffic, for, um, bugs and vulnerabilities and general, you know, s security well-being of uh, enterprise computers. Makes sense. You know, antivirus is always a, uh, a decently common uh, thing. And fun fact, the uh, the CEO and co-founder of CrowdStrike used to be the chief technical officer of uh, McAfee. So it kind of ties hand in hand. Uh, the recent issue that uh, sort of uh, happened is that CrowdStrike, you know, it's an automated service. It will automatically scan computers and update drivers and things like that. And it tries to do its best so that, you know, people can't just work around it, that kind of stuff. So in order to do that, the, um, the, the, the software, the service is uh, implemented as a kernel level driver. The kernel level just means that it runs at the lowest level uh, it possibly can on a uh, computer as uh, ideally, kernel level drivers are intended for hardware, because hardware is always gonna, you know, have some, well, I, I guess you need to be low level because it's literally a thing you're sending over electrical signals. Antivirus does it as well by convention, not by requirement, but by convention, because generally it is harder for a user space program to break a, well, sorry, it's, it's harder for a kernel-based program to break another kernel-based program. Um, not kernel-based program, but like kernel-based program. Um, it's harder for that to happen, um, or for at least for, and especially user space programs, especially, gonna have trouble. Man, I'm having trouble there. Let's just get the coins at the end, because I gotta do, you know, it, like, you see this, and you're like, oh, I gotta do, like, the odds of me getting all four of these in one jump, very, very rare as well. So... And now we're back on the uh, the second level here, where oh look at that, more more things to jump at, and again it's so difficult to get all of them. So you drop back down, and you just gotta start the track back again. This is why this is gonna take quite a quite a few minutes, but uh, I'll get there. Don't worry. Um, so it's usually implemented like that. Now. Windows, for those of the uninitiated, uh, a lot of people know about Windows Blue Screen. But if you didn't know, Blue Screens are particularly caused by either hard crashes, well, usually hard crashes of kernel level uh, functionality. Most of the operating system itself is implemented in the kernel space because it's, you know, it's the operating system, it's the lowest level stuff you can kind of write until you basically hit hardware drivers. Um, and uh, usually if a user space program crashes, well, you know, that should be catastrophic. You still have your operating system. Everything should all be generally, you know, still is running just because your Chrome crashed or something like that. So uh, that's the separation that goes on. Now, yeah, in practice, 
you know, the windows can crash via a variety of ways, but usually it's only drivers and operating system bugs. Um, so introduce a brand new, just, it's not a feature update. I think it was just a security rollout for, oh my gosh, there was full damage. I forgot, I forgot there was full damage. Um, introduce a brand new security update for uh, CrowdStrike and oh no. Lots of Windows computers around the world, when this was deployed, immediately started getting blue screens. The computer would reboot and ooh, ooh, blue screens, blue screens. And it's not something that is easily controllable. CrowdStrike is rolling out these updates kind of on their own. They're just kind of self-electing, hey, I'm gonna just do this update, have fun. Um, generally, these, the devices would stagger the updates and that did happen but they all rolled out so kind of quickly um, and uh, more and more and more and more Windows computers in, in Enterprise specifically that had CrowdStrike installed so just just for note this didn't apply to every single computer ever this just apply, uh, applied to um, computers uh, you know, with CrowdStrike installed, who received the update, which still was significant amounts of computers. Uh, sometimes it was entire businesses. Obviously, if this is a computer that you use at work, well, there you go. That's your computer out. See you next week. I kind of, oh, you know, not very fun days. Um, I still got two over there and one over there. Ooh. Just keep taking more cracks at these jumps, I'll tell you. Um, so that's not fun. Now, obviously, you know, I think a lot of people immediately identified what all of these computers were on CrowdStrike. Uh, so within like an hour, I think people knew. Um, and on top of that, well, yeah, yeah. So, so, so customers definitely felt the grunt immediately because, okay, well, I don't use CrowdStrike on my computer, but you know what computers do use CrowdStrike? Your, your ATM machines, redundant, I know, sorry, <laughs> I said the machine part twice. Um, your, uh, you know, like, businesses you, you, you buy things at, uh, the self-serve supermarket checkout things. Um, my laptop at work, it's a Mac, so it actually wasn't affected, but it, do it does have CrowdStrike. And I'm like, oh no, oh no, like, I'm very certain this affected people on Windows at my work. I'm just like, oh no, I can't, I can't do anything now. Um, and it sucks, it really sucks that this is the case. Um, so, the short-term fix, it, well, not, no, the short-term fix is like, uh, no, the computer's kind of foobar. There was a kind of fix that I think people on the internet found out, which is try to boot into safe mode and just delete the driver. I do not know how easy that was to do, because I'm like, I feel like I'm not allowed into my computer in a safe mode. Like, I, I don't know if they like, if it boots like that, maybe, I don't imagine why it wouldn't, but like, hey, if I can delete important CrowdStrike files by booting into safe mode, um, which, grant for reference, safe mode does not load drivers, it loads a bare minimum set of drivers, so if safe mode doesn't work, the computer itself is real mess, like, either something hardware-wise is flat out not working, or Windows itself is not working as expected. Uh, do I need to jump up to the top level anymore? I think I got everything. Maybe we'll just check one. One last time. One last time. Fortunately, these coins don't have, like, the infinite draw distance that, uh, uh, Spyro's gems do have as well. Yeah, okay, I did get everything up here. Bit redundant for me to to do that so how about let's just jump to the the middle ledges start getting to some of these i'm never gonna pick up these if i if i never go over here um so this definitely affected a lot of people around the world i think one use case i saw was um uh some microsoft azure servers were running crowdstrike and that affected you know any of the websites that were being hosted on that so if you were trying to access a website that was using CrowdStrike under the hood well yep same same boat same problem appears again um 
I think also flights. We had a big problem where like airports basically shut down because it was like, yep, cool, we all use Windows. Uh, and I don't think there's really a like, oh, you know, like how dare people set things up like this. I don't think there's really any blame on the serve, you know, the, the places themselves. CrowdStrike had been a working program for years. Um, Windows is, you know, comfortable as a user-facing operating system for lots of businesses, and I'm not even saying, like, there's, a, there's the, the meme of like, ah, oh, you know, the year of the Linux desktop is maybe approaching us, maybe. Uh, Linux desktop is still got a ways to go, but, you know, some people definitely try to make it work, and do make it work for them, and I appreciate, you know, them pioneering and really taking the plunge. Uh, I, I've tried, it's not for me, um, in Enterprise, I, or sorry, in my work, I wouldn't object to using Linux. I have some mixed, you know, relationships with my Mac. It has so much struggle with, like, my displays. It just does not like my, my monitors at all. Um, and upgrading to, an, an, you know, an M-based Mac is just like, yep, it's worse. It's worse with the monitors. Slightly better in some ways, and worse in some other ways. Uh... There's lots of other things that are good about the Macs, but, yeah, no, I don't know, I don't know. Um, would I prefer a Windows computer? I don't know, because uh, it's in the Enterprise and I have to install software I'm not familiar with anyway, so it's sort of all over the place. Um, but, yeah, so what's the fix? The computers are blue screening, you can obviously boot into safe mode and, and do this thing. Some system admins went in, they IT admins, they went in, they did that, but there was a proper update that um, CrowdStrike eventually did push out and say, hi, yes, you have to install that manually still, because your computer doesn't boot. You, could, you can't just roll out an update when the computers immediately fail to turn on, and they're just constantly getting stuck in the blue screen mid-boot mid cycle. And this is the massive headache that just happened um, because all of these computers and all of these businesses have to manually go in and update all of this all of these operating systems by the way um, look at this fella down here Whoop. Uh, uh. <laughs> he's just chilling I chatted to a mate who knows more about this movie and he's like yeah that's like one of like the, the secondary antagonists that was just that enemy. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. Uh, I'm clearing off the ship a little quicker than I expected. You know, like, one thing that just feels like it's missing? There needs to be more challenges. More, like, individual, like, oh, you know, you gotta, like, put me out with this, or do a race, or something like that. Um, it doesn't feel like there's that many of them. I know you get those, like, little tokens for, you know, for doing the side content, but like, hey, that was one guy who asked you to run around the ship. Uh, now we can go downstairs, and that continues on uh, the rest of the level. Uh, confusingly, upstairs is, uh, not that. We got us a map. But, uh, we should find some things up here. Uh, this is a bit of a <laughs> empty room for PS1. You know what I mean? It's like, yep. Pretty, pretty large room. Hello there. Mr. Hawkins, there are no passengers on this voyage. In the event of an emergency, you may be called upon to man the plasma cannons. Therefore, you'll need to engage in some cannon training. Are you ready to begin? Oh, okay. I appreciate Hi, it's... Captain. I am ready to engage the enemy. I appreciate it's uh, training. So what is this? You gotta, you gotta tell these asteroids who's boss. Eventually. Three, you can't get hit by too many asteroids. Two. And yes, it's a camera move as opposed to the other one. Uh, the asteroids will break into pieces, so... And sometimes you'll have these ones kind of sail across where it's like, they're kind of far? Your shot takes its time to get to... Oh well. Live another day. Live another day. I want to get it, I want to get it! There you go. 20 points. Worth it, right? Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, no, IT admins just had to put in the massive work and uh, manually update everything. And uh, this leads into quite a few questions of one, do we have too much reliance on uh, third party? Because I, I, I read the local news on this one and it was like, well not local, the state news. And it was just like, yeah, third party software did this. And it's like, I mean, it is indeed third party software, but it's like, it's third party stuff that nearly everyone uses. It's like, most software is third party at that rate. Um, What was the score target? I think it was like 500. <laughs> or not. Ah, okay. It was surviving. Well done, Mr. Hawkins. It seems we might make a space review yet. Pity I'm all out of merit badges, because but I'll here, take make this a as a space that you've achieved the basic space gunnery standard. Carry on. Yeah, I got enough treasure to open up the next level. That's literally the last level I unlocked. I don't even need to play the <laughs> Like anything else, just leave the game, we're done. Don't need to do two race, or you need to do the final race stage. Because it's after the boss, technically. Like every good level in this game. Oh, uh, hi there, lad. It's me job to operate the cargo elevator for below decks. How's about giving it a try, eh, lad? You know what this means. Yeah, sure, I'll use the lift. He'll use the lift. It was the elevator two seconds ago, now it's the lift. Whoa. But yeah, so there's a big question on like, you know, the reliance on these third party programs because yeah, uh, there's also the, again, a, a question of kernel level, I was going to say anti-cheat. Good area. thing there's a secret there. Also there's a secret here. Secret area. Just what I was looking for. Dude, uh, first time I played this, I was wandering around this area so much. Hey, look, it's the same guy again. Uh, we have fire jets just on the ship, you know, cash. I don't know why I thought that was a wall that you could shoot, but I think that was just the texture warping. Um, it opens up the, yeah, the discussion of maybe there should be more companies doing this. Like, I know everyone wants the best, but... When the best does this, you trust it. Um, a lot of people describe this as like Y2K but real. And um, from my end, oh, hold on, we're gonna. Jim lad, if the oh, captain's yeah. finished with you, I could go with a bit of help down in Megali. Would you help an old space and out? Okay. Yeah, I'm done with what I was doing for the captain, so what do you need? What do you need? That's right, it's uh, this, literally again. Catch the gr catch the yellows, watch the greens. Green is poop. Two, one. And the reds, I guess. You can catch the reds. I'd say it's probably a little easier than the previous one, but the input delay is still there. Where well, it's just a massive whatever there. Um, but yeah, I think there's definitely a lot of questions on this. Also, I just want to add, McAfee had a, uh, a massive scale like this back in 2010. Back when this guy was indeed CTO. Um, where uh, a lot of people's computers failed to boot up. Because of a McAfee update. Uh, McAfee was not as widely used. So I, and I think it was less impactful. Uh, but yeah, people calling this like Y2K but real, it's like, yeah, but like this is the reason why automatic updates are simultaneously, you know, a gift that required because it's like, hey, people are not going to be manually updating their computers. On the flip side, you invite this to happen. You invite people to accidentally deploy an update that literally like nulls out a whole block of like code in your in your driver and then when things try to read it and they get null pointers and they're like cool null pointer crash and it's like oh that's your driver whoops i can't recover it's by design <laughs> pizza planet token ah jimbo thank you lad now you know what they say a crew is only three meals away from a mutiny here you go 
take this for helping me out of a pinch. Sure, yeah. okay. Yeah! Uh, this ship area is uh, slightly confusing, but uh, the trick I have is start with this, you know, that right path and it goes above ground. And it'll kind of make sense. These are all just straight corridors, not going anywhere too wild here. And eventually you come into this big room, but you can use some platforms to jump about. Right, there we go. Um, but yeah, I don't really have a big like input to the the crowd strike. Like, what is the the problem? But I feel like discussing it and just kind of saying, "Hi, yes, this did happen." And I guess for me personally, it's like uh, I'm always on the fence about antivirus and things like that. I'm not saying that you know, world doesn't need antivirus because uh, in a in a world where programs can indeed communicate with each other in the ways that they can, like. There's a massive problem on Windows where you can just write things to access other programs very easily. Permissions are not really locked down. It's very easy for programs to just, like, not even not even need permission. There's just ways for them to do it. And it kind of sucks. So, these, these uh, you know, security programs exist to serve the gaps of, uh, of all operating systems. Um, even Linux, even Linux, it happens. Um, there we go. Uh, and also, you know, system IT admins. There's a part where it's like, okay, well, it is just a sellable product. Like, you know, they they might be doing what, you know, something that is indeed a service, but it's also like, hey, they are indeed trying to make money as well. That's fair, I guess. Uh, but it's like, yeah, once, once there is a problem that affects your business based on another company, like a dependency company, and this can happen for any reason, this could be literally because the internet shut down, this could be the power is out, this could be, uh, you know, like there's a hunger strike, there's lots and lots and lots of different reasons why this, well, not this in particular, but why really a lot of things can, like, crawl to a halt. There's, there's a bottleneck, there's a reliance on some dependency of a thing. Um, what is the solution then? Well, I'd say competing markets, or rather, this should be a competing market, hands down. Not saying that, like, CrowdStrike is doing anything wrong because all these companies use CrowdStrike, but rather, I think people should be wary about using the same, like, service as other people for that very reason. If they cease to work in the way that they should, well then, uh, you know, that's bad news. Uh, for reference, there are three switches around this bottom area. I'll explore around, we'll try and find them, but, uh, I think you're probably forced into finding all of them anyway, so... Uh, it's a bit of a maze, but you, you'll, you'll see what I mean. Like, it's got a few branching paths, but you'll figure out where you go, or at least where you can and can't go, and I'll, I'll basically, I'll find it all, don't worry. I can appreciate me walking over the checkpoint multiple times, so. Uh, yeah, I think there's that. Uh, security and antivirus, I think people take seriously, but I also kind of hate the whole, like, you know, using them when they have, like, such insidious access, because at the very least, not at the very least, because it, it, really, it shouldn't have happened at all. I know testing in prod is great, um, but there's also a, a degree of, well, what if it was more insidious? What if there was, like, you know, like an actual piece of malware as part of this driver update? Like, people don't sign off on this kind of stuff. We actually have, like, a, a problem um, at my work where... Uh, like, there's a rule where all code, all code changes and deployment changes must be approved by at least two humans. And it's like, what do you, what do you do about these, like, software that's automatically updating things? Because people are not going to automatically update things. This is, this is a, uh, you know, a bit of a problem. Chicken and egg. It's like, what, how do you, how do you do this? Not chicken and egg, but more... You want this to happen, because you're unsafe if you don't even have it happening at all. 
but people can't do it. People or people won't do it or don't do it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like people are going to get very comfortable about this practice being in place. So, catch twenty two. I don't think there's a there's a clear victory out of that. So. So uh, you put some fuel fuel cells in these, and uh, we'll open up new ways of continuing on. Die, same enemy again. Uh, don't feel bad if you put the wrong one in, because you can see that literally all of them are before any of the gates anyways. But, yeah. No, it's it's a doozy, uh, and I, I I I hope I hope lots of IT departments around the world are a bit wiser. Um, not not specifically to like it was their fault, but more we put our trust in these third party like tools that have investigated and like figured out things, and then it's like, yep, they uh, they are not always working right. Uh, whoever deployed the code at CrowdStrike, you know, may God have mercy, like, holy crap, that is, uh, that is an uncomfortable position to be in because you literally cause, like, billions of dollars of damages, potential loss of life because hospitals are currently in the middle of, like, scanning people and suddenly, oh look, computer is now blue screening, or computer I'm interacting with is blue screening, like, there are so many, like, points. Also, I guess, people design your systems to not be as reliant on individual programs. I get, like, you know, there's lots of, uh, how do I put it? Like, you know what I mean? It's like, what? Ooh. Like, if, if you have a, 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 a setup, a work setup, you've got lots and lots of different computers, they, you know, they have different roles, and it's like, yeah, like, how many points of failure do you have? How many computers does it take to knock out your system? And if it's like one, multiple, multiple locations could be, you know, just as like gnarly to hit. It's like, yep, this uh, this calls for a, you know, a bit of an intervention here. There's so many computers where it's like, yep, everything could just go go terribly because of the. Uh, programming bug by some guy at CrowdStrike that automatically deployed itself. So, hopefully, I think a, a lot of people will learn, uh, you know, the do's and the don'ts, what, what, what they should do for their setups, um, but at the very least, just have a mixture of things. Don't have one singular point of failure. Try your best for resiliency and stuff like that. But yeah, that's a that's a huge long spiel. I uh, hope you enjoyed my TED talk. Um, one of these is actually the exit. I think it's uh, it's actually this one. So I'll explore this room last, and then I'll, I'll hope that I've picked up everything along the way. Uh, I know I got to go back upstairs slightly to deliver the crystals as well. Oh hi there. At least, once I find- oh, there it is. I was like, once I find that fourth crystal! Where's that damn fourth Chaos Emerald? Yeah. Uh, my constant ramblings about Intel processors is still- still going back and forth. Uh, so, I, I don't have really anything new other than t processes processors being affected, and also, uh, people going back and going, hey, W-Series motherboards are actually o indeed overclocking, which is something I'm very certain I noticed. I was like, come on guys, that's like, cursory glance. You should be able to verify this yourself if you had one of these boards. But, uh, but other than that, uh... Hardware is in a quiet state right now. We are currently anticipating the rise in releases. And that's kind of it. Some reviewers don't even have units yet. They don't even have something to test. Oh, such a trek. Such a trek. Oh, not this door. Yeah, 
didn't say 100%ing was easy. But imagine if Spyro required like this amount of like just backtracking. At least I don't have to go up the lift. Or the elevator, depending on how you phrase it. So, uh, do I dare get into a follow-up controversial topic? Uh, <laughs> last week, a uh, certain uh, significant event in uh, the 2024 United States uh, election happened, and uh, on a genuine relic you, of no, I history. Just, I will just Deposit do this because it's, 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 it's the same line. It's the same line. You valued customer. Here's your genuine piece of Thank treasure. You. Certified by the pirate yeah. company to be one hundred percent authentic. Uh, but yeah, no, there was a certain significant event, and uh, in the past week, uh, I think there's been two things. One, literally, uh, literally, this morning. So this would have been uh, what, like, maybe like 16, 17 hours ago. Uh, a certain, a certain president uh, is not running for next year's election campaign after running for next year's election campaign, or, or rather this year's election, next year's presidency. Uh, this is passing on to a new person, uh, and that's about it. I don't really have too much to say, because that's just like, hey, you know, we start getting into actual US politics, and I'm not really a US politics champion, but I do talk about things that are close to me. I'm also not American, I just wanna, I just wanna highlight that as well. Like, I'm not American, so, hey, my opinions are very, like, uh, what's the term? observer focused it's like literally things i see and not really things i can like live through so i'm just like i don't know man this is just things i notice but if there's one thing i do notice it is uh certainly people on the internet lots and lots and lots of vitriol and i spoke briefly about like how people are like bro like you can't like you know what's the term you can't- I think we're actually just like, wandering straight to the end now. Right. This was a dead end. Yes, okay. Um, the, there's certainly a degree of some people are saying things that were like, you know, mm, poor taste. It's probably the, the straightforward way of, of putting it. Um, I just really don't want to wait for the steam jets, you know? Just want to go for it. Um, Poor taste is definitely a very subjective phrase, of course, because it's like, what is poor taste? It depends on the context of what you're saying, who you're saying it to, lots and lots and lots of, you know, uh, variables into that. And obviously as well, it's not a science. But I think as long as, like, you're not insane, you're legitimately not wishing death on people, it's like, well, you know, like, at, at the very least I can spot what you're saying. I don't know. I don't, I don't really want to get into, like, the, the what you can and what you can't. Use, use your gut and just kind of, like, follow what people are saying, I guess. 950 seems like a nice whole number. But I am missing the, the last map piece. Maybe it's right down here. I got a hole. Are you kidding me? I'm missing a, the map piece? I'm up 5 out of 6, and that would give me a, a relic. I'm very certain I picked up every single coin otherwise. Oh, really? And you can't just hit, you know, all four directions and have more, like, point the right way. And the last map piece is definitely not there, so... What's the odds it's back above ground? Because I've been wandering through, like, these streets for quite a while, and, uh... I haven't seen it. The, uh, the white room. This was closed off, and again, I don't think I see it. My hunch is it's probably above ground, and I just like missed it in a corner or something. So, we'll wander back. Dang it! Dang it! So close. Um, but uh, but certainly, uh, some people, um, not necessarily the ones that I was referring to last week indirectly. I don't think I really... I mean, I, I, I'm still not going to name drop anyone in particular because it's just like... You know, I, I feel like 
it's the action. It's the, the you know, what is it exactly is going down and, you know, what is said. And it's not really about the who. It really isn't about the who. Maybe, maybe there's a bit of, you know, who, where are they and what are the things they do. But it's not like who in particular. I don't think there's really any, any single person, um... Like, like if I name, if I name drop someone as well, that changes the perception as well. Like your your preconceptions of this person may influence exactly what, like how you feel about something I'm about to say. So I'm like, hey, if I don't say it, I'm, um. So, but uh, point is, is that I think there's definitely been some people who uh, have absolutely copped uh, some backlash. Actually, some real massive backlash for Are things that they've said about the this. Uh, the scenario. Yeah, sure, um, I'll use the link. Oh, I guess I could say one one easy one. Uh, uh, what was it? Kyle Glass of Tenacious D um, said on stage uh, a certain quip about not missing uh, and uh, particularly name dropping the person that uh, should not be missed. Uh, this was sort of jokingly accepted by the crowd and at the time, but uh, the internet never forgets or never. It always remembers. It's like, you know, everything is gonna be filmed, everything, whatever, all this stuff happens. Gets onto the internet, a lot of people see it and they go, ah, how could you? And I definitely am like, yeah, like, it's poor taste. I, def I definitely agree with that. Uh, we get into, we get into this, uh, this whole degree of, uh, like, if you personally don't want to see one of their shows because of, or really anyone's stuff because of something they've said power to you that's you as a person you can oh it's probably in this chest wow it's a whole chest i was missing there we go okay now we can wander back we're good um at least it was right there and i didn't have to climb up to the top and try and find it again um i i am very wary about the mob in the sense of like when someone like if you if you don't like what someone says and you personally won't you know experience their stuff or pay them or whatever that is entirely your prerogative and that is perfectly fine i'm also decently okay with you telling your friends about that or even ranting about it on the internet and making that the case but it starts to get a little bit too far when it's like, hey, you know, like, people complain and suddenly someone incredibly very, very, very close to person decides to immediately, oh, sorry, to, to the original, like, person that's being complained about sort of goes, ah, you're right, let's completely destroy this person's life or remove them from, you know, their associations or cut them out. Like, people... This is, this is a bit harsh. I don't know. This, it's, it's a bit charged. I, I don't know how to navigate around this. But I do see, like, a uh, certain behavior of, like, this person said a thing. And, like, at, at company that they work at. Are you okay with this person? Like, bro, this person won. Okay, real talk. First of all, first of all, let's, let's make a big distinction. There is a big difference between saying a thing in your personal space and saying a thing at your work. Uh, several of the examples, including the Tenacious D example, that was at the, the work. Uh, some other examples were not at their work. It's like that is them as an individual. I don't think they are representing the we place they work, the every single are waking moment of their life. Like, you know, I think we should be candid about, hey, that's, that's them as an individual. Not saying it's without association, but certainly when you rope in the company's Twitter. It's a bit of a bit of a push, bit of a stretch, so. Anyway, we've got a race, that's the legacy race. That's right, you know where we're at? We are on a boat. Technically, wouldn't they all be falling at the same Like how do you how do you have the the boat was falling? I, I guess maybe wind drag. They didn't have the sails up. And then it gets caught on fire anyways, but, uh... Hey, no, we're on the ground, we're ready! So, it's not, it's not skateboarding, it's, uh, wind surfing boarding. But the exact same rules apply, and I, I forgive you if it literally controls the same, and it even has the same music playing. Yeah, just what I was looking for. That's 
kind of easy to pull into pits. But again, I'll try my best to pick up things. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I I think that's a clear, like that's a that's a hard distinction. That hopefully, you know, whenever situations like this arise, we make we at least make the distinction of okay, was this person like doing it under the under the oops? Because yeah, that, I'm gonna lose my lives just on this. It's very easy to fall into bits in uh. Especially this level. Actually, more so this level than any other, like, even the, the fourth race level. Nah, I don't need it. Um, I feel like it's getting a bit charged in this, in terms of, like, I'm, I'm saying stuff. I, like... I don't know, I don't know. There's a, there's a part of me that's like, oh, there's, there's some things that I'm just not the biggest fan of there. Uh, some of it does involve other content creators, and the question then becomes what is them as a person and what is them as a brand? Because for me, I, I usually, like, it's not it's not an exact mystery, I think if someone really wants to look it up, they'll probably find, like, my real name and hopefully not my real work, but just as a disclaimer, this is me as a person talking. And I'm just like, hey, you know, I'm open to, like, discussions about, like, stuff. I'm not freaking like, ah, oh, my opinion is, is the only opinion that counts and you're absolutely wrong if you think otherwise. And also, uh, then I'm gonna say some, like, incredibly r radical things and that, that will annoy people. It's like, no, like, I, I'm just a guy trying to, like, figure out the world. That's, that's really, that's really all I am. Um, and virtually everything that I do is kind of me like if, if it's on behalf of the place I work or uh, you know the the I guess I, I was gonna say the BNO branding as if I even exist like it, I don't know it's just kind of me as a person but but uh, it's definitely one where it's like where where does one draw the line and there's some people who legitimately like do not act like they're online personas but how do you know? How, how, how do you know that? Did I pick up all the gems and stuff? Yeah. I think I did, actually. I have fallen in so many pits, I think time is gone. But you know what? Let's just see how we go, shall we? Yeah. I don't know why these doors have to keep closing, but sure, okay. 254. Oh! Oh! Did we do it in one go? Did we do it in one go? No. Heck no. No. It, did, it didn't happen. It did not happen at all. Oh. <laughs> uh, not as close. Not as close. So. Oh, let's give it another go. Once more with feeling. Did you like how I didn't have to pay anyone in that previous level as well? Just thought you'd like to know. Um, but yeah. Uh, so this is, this does affect my space because again, like I, I mentioned, it's like other Twitch streamers, Let's Players, VTubers, you know, we're all in our own kinds of circles, but we are all content creators on these platform-based sites. The uh, Twitch is one where it enables people to do this kind of, you know, to, to play video games and talk about the things that they want, and as long as it doesn't break terms of service, I'd say that's generally okay. But they're also sort of beholden to... Shareholders and uh, advertising in particular, and it's like, yeah, like Amazon is not going to be too happy if you do say things that technically, while they don't break terms of service, scare away, you know, attention. Um, they will generally still not like that. Um, and obviously, that's a bit of a weird one as well, because it's like, hey, you know, it doesn't break terms of service, and that's that's fair, but. Um, or fair to fair to question that I think, and and, and especially as well, like I mean, okay, I know I know I, I I follow some 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 content creators that like espouse opinions, um, and they're certainly just their opinions, and they may actually be popular, and I think it's kind of odd how some sometimes they get you know community strikes or whatever, and it's just like literally like uh, why I sometimes get that. Um, 
sorry, not I, I get that. I did get it once, actually. But it's like, it, it wasn't even for an opinion, that's just like someone abusing the, um, the, the community strikes feature. They're just like, ah, this had, this had um, what is it, it had, uh, I had like a video struck down for like, glorifying domestic violence, that was the claim I got, and I was like, what the heck, and I had to send like a month's worth of emails just to get that removed. And it's, and it's like, it's just content like what I do, I just talk about things and play about video games and didn't even have any like, violence in the video, <laughs> it was all just video game. And then someone's like, and what was the game? Uh, Hatred? <laughs> no, it wasn't that. I haven't played Hatred on the channel yet. <laughs> yet. I'm not gonna say never. Um, this is a bit of a non sequitur. Point is what I'm going for, is uh, <laughs> like, there's, there's definitely a degree of like, man, people are really going, and, and the same people who have been bit by cancellation by a bit of, you know, mob justice mentality. They believe that someone has said something or done something in error, and they spark up a lot of people to complain at their tangential figures, their workplaces, their family members. I'm like, bro, like, you know, okay, one thing I, I realized was I, as an individual, here's something, for, uh, you know, as a, as, for reference. You remember when Will Smith slapped Chris Rock at the Oscars? This was, uh, was this 2022? This was a bit ago. No. If you're here at Treasure Planet, by the way, this is the last level of the game. So five more tokens, 300 more treasures, and we have company. Just, just casually, this is, uh... <laughs> I mean, the movie's cool, but oh my gosh, like... The game doesn't, like, it's sort of gone into it. Um... So, okay. Here we are, then. Journey's End. Flint's Trove. Treasure Planet. Now, if we can just avoid that gang of bloodthirsty pirates, find the treasure, and escape with our lives, then all will be well. All will be well. There we go. She's just chilling there as well. Mr. Hawkins, if the area is secure, I could do with a little help holding off these pirates. And, uh, yeah, we've just got the another... The area is secure, Captain! Now I'll help you take care of those stinking pirates! Man, he is shouting that. Adds another shooting gallery game. Why not? Three. So does that every level has had a shooting gallery game? One. Uh... Makes sense. Uh, you have a gun that overheats. Don't overheat. Shoot their hats off, I guess. Um, yeah. Ah. Uh, I don't know where I'm going with when I'm talking about this, because it's like, on the one hand, I think the action of going after, like, people's employees- Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. So I mentioned the Will Smith uh, Oscar thing. I didn't even finish the point. Uh, do you, do you remember? Uh, at the time, like, okay, like, yeah, it was, it was a kind of outrageous thing to, to do. Not a single person, or hopefully not, but I personally didn't. Um, I don't see that many people go, Oh, Jaden Smith, can I get your opinion on this? I think a lot of people respect it that it's like, that's just Will Smith and his wife, and perhaps with Chris Rock, that's the beef. But, like, legitimately, it's like, I don't think there was anything to gain about, like, asking the family asking like places that Will Smith has worked at you know what I mean like it was outrageous and we kept that small and I feel like that's kind of how things should be if you do find something a bit you know kind of outrageous outlandish your beef is with that person and you personally can control everything about what you do in you know in connection to that whether that's witnessing the media or whatever thank you Mr. Hawkins it appears that the good doctor has managed to stabilize my condition. Please take this as a further token of my gratitude. Pizza Planet token. Oh, great. Um, so yeah, what I'm going with for that is just more like... Uh, I feel like the method, even if, even if, to be fair, in this particular circumstance, I 
highly, highly advise these people revise their opinions. I really, really hope that they, like, at the very least, change their stances, realize the things they're saying are incredibly wrong. Shouldn't be doing that. Some of that, some of that is like, this is kind of endorsing terrorism, guys. You shouldn't, shouldn't be back in there, like, literally just fair election, guys. Come on. Um, but, uh, I think you get the Fell in the Kool-Aid. Don't touch the Kool-Aid, it's not very fun. No, it's not Kool-Aid, because it's purple. Kool-Aid's red. Posture check, by the way. Um, I do believe that, you know, there should be a reprimand for people, and I... I get people, because I see a lot of... This, this thing that spurs this on is that I see a lot of people in my timeline going, you get what you deserve, or you were doing, like, this kind of... Not you, but, like, ideologically. is like, you know, you were doing this kind of stuff to us, um, and in particular, like, one... Uh, large Twitter account? I don't actively follow this person, but, like, I, this stuff just shows up. And it's like, you were the victim of this, and you are now the perpetuator of this. Like... She was on the other foot. I, I'm gonna be that kind of guy who's like, hey, the tactic sucks. But I also do fully agree that these people need to have something reprimanded. I just think the tactic sucks because it's like, if you don't think the tactic sucks, it's gonna happen again to you. And then it's like, we're gonna get into this problem. Um, I think, you know, the terms of engagement need to be refined. Uh, all's fair in love and war, and, and you know, this, sh this shouldn't be war, this should be, like, personal, you know, or, or at least... <sighs> no, yeah, it should be personal. It should be, like, what is your relationship with the creator, and stuff like that. Um, now, I will say, uh, just for reference, uh, yeah, no, some people have been banned from uh, Twitch or other sites. Um, because uh, the same thing that they said does indeed break terms of service. I get that. I completely get that in this case. So when people go like, oh, it's a cancellation, it's like, oh, I don't know about that. I, I, I think that was actually kind of sound. Um, so when it's like someone who is indeed a streamer, it's like, oh, okay, well, like, in theory, people did complain to their place of work, but it's also, yeah, what is the separation? I don't think there really is clear separation so that's why I just go hey the stuff I say is I try to be candid and I just try to like I don't know I, I, not, I don't know but I'm trying to figure out the world I'm trying to understand what's going on and uh, hopefully saying it like it is or at least like I'm open to ideas I'm basically saying nothing at the end of the day is that is that kind of how this goes you know what I realized as well? It's like, I, I, I mean, okay, pe people watching the VOD, there's literally no one said anything in chat. Sometimes, I, I, the Twitch audience, when they're here, I love it. When they're not here, it's quiet, it's cozy. But people are gonna look back on the YouTube VODs. So, hey, you on YouTube. Hi there. How you doing? Um, <laughs> but, uh, I don't know if, side note by the way, I don't know if I actually, like, if people would be down for me just streaming on YouTube. I wasn't the biggest fan of YouTube's uh, platform for streaming back in 2020. I just haven't reconsidered it just yet, so. But I would still want to re-upload with a higher quality because you can do that. Um, but not directly on top of the video on YouTube. I'm not a creator, I can't do that, but it's kind of annoying. Oh, this jump sucks, by the way, because you can't grab the ledge, so you just have to, like, nail a good jump. And yeah, if you, you know, hit the wall, it's like, yep, you gotta try and correct yourself and try and get on the ledge, or else... I'm gonna try and use the D-pad for this. But yeah, it's, it's kind of precise. Uh, either that, or I just, I'm being really sloppy with my double jump, so... Nah, I, I think it is like a very tight jump because your, your shoes are gonna like touch the corner. It's like, yep, nope, that's it. So, um, yeah, I. It's a sensitive topic, this. Because, like, 
it does affect me, and it affects people that I know, and it, it kind of affects the community as a whole, because it's like, I feel like generally people should- Oh, I'm so glad I nailed that way quicker than it took in the previous attempts. Uh, previous off-camera runs. Um, but yeah, like... Like, I think it is serious enough and close enough to me that it needs to be, like, spoken about, but it is also, like, it is sensitive, and I completely get people being upset about, like, uh, like, the stances people have. Uh, I, I feel like I saw, um, what was it, John Carmack specifically called this out, and he, I think, I feel like I share a lot of the opinion of him, and then... Like, some people are just calling it like, oh, you know, like, you're a fence-sitter, or that kind of stuff. You know, like, like you enable it, I'm like, I kind of get that as well. I don't know where I really, like, oh my gosh, I can't rotate the camera. I, I, it's kind of difficult to know exactly where this is. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay. Like, I'm torn. I'm really torn. And I've had, like, content creators that I, I've enjoyed say some things that are like, oh man, man, that's a bit harsh, ain't it? I've had some content creators that I've like generally not liked going, I think you may be right on this one? But not saying that like I'm like suddenly like flipping my stance and suddenly, oh, you know, I throw out my old friends group or my old like follow list and it's like, yeah, no, new ones only, people who agree with me or I agree with in, in those, uh, I'm not like that, I'm gonna still follow those people just because I don't like them on like, one take, because it's like, hey, you know, it might be circumstantial or whatever. Um, and somewhat, there's a newfound respect for some of those people who generally said absolutely terrible things, and now it's like, hey, you know, like, like they're calling it right. You know, maybe it's a broken clock, but maybe it's like, hey, they actually, you know, notice, they realize. So, all I think people should do is uh, generally have... Um, you know, their wits about them, I'm okay for open conversation, but I also am kinda like, I'm not offensive or as in like, oh, you know, like, uh, what's the, what's the term, like the conservative kind of stance of do nothing. Also, did you like how you didn't have to do any of these in the previous level? Can I hit this guy from this distance? There you go, very nice. Awkward, ain't it? Oh, oh no! Oh, I fell in the drink. I fell in the drink. Uh, but yeah. Oh, it's 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 such a touchy subject. I don't think there's really anything more to say. I think it's uh, not necessarily passing over because you know I, I mentioned it's like well the you know the presidential pick has changed, so specific comments about this U.S. presidency are gonna continue going because that is such an incredibly fast-moving topic. And I get that. Uh, yeah, there's one over here as well. I completely get that. Uh, I'm not a politics guy in terms of my channel. I do follow it. I do, like, pay attention because uh, it's sort of downstream. It's just like, hey, you know, like, things they talk about in US politics ends up showing up in Australian politics fairly soon, so. But I'm not very opinionated as to be like, ah, oh, you know, like, like, person should be the, the president, um, because I'm just like, I don't know, I got like a whole system, and I think focusing entirely on the president is, like, not the whole story, and I don't know the whole story. Like, I know that that, I, I know that I don't know the whole story, so that's why I'm like, hey, you know, like, whatever I feel is probably not like, I don't know too much about that, so, that's it. So, TLDR, uh, I don't know if the strategies of contacting people's employers is exactly the wisest thing to be doing, but I certainly get that these that some people are saying some real heinous stuff, and uh, probably should like learn. Well, you know, best best thing they learn, worst thing they don't learn. How do you encourage people to learn that they've said stuff that's wrong? Uh, I don't have an answer. This doesn't feel like final level music, does it? Like, 
the movie clip made it seem like it was like this, you know, looming threat. And it's just like, da 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 da, pirate music. It's been pirate music every level. Ah uh ha, -huh, fiddle dee dee, do what you want because the pirate is free. I don't know the lines because I don't watch Lazy Town. Blows people's minds when they find out that's actually, like, from Lazy Town itself. It's like, you're telling me that it's. Oh! That one coin. That coin was just disagreeable right there. Oh man, this is a bit of a. Yeah, this is a bit of a backtrack. Ugh. Okay. Uh. But yeah. I'll leave the topic at there. I don't know. I think I. <laughs> uh. I. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's so touchy. It's so touchy, so. Um. Yeah. Also, yeah, 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 other, other, just, just tangentially related, uh, other, other content creators that I follow are getting, like, lambasted on, especially Twitter, it's always Twitter, ain't it? Um, for, like, having a stance, and then it's like, ah, oh, you're a hypocrite because you said this, like, so long ago, and a uh, part of me is like, okay, well, sometimes it's like, just, you've taken that clip out of context and you've interpreted it wrong, like, go back read it and if you think it's still wrong well ugh, I can't tell you anything other than you're literally wrong you're trying to tell me that my opinion is not what <laughs> not what I think it is like okay I guess um, and on the other hand I think there's also times where it's like hey you know my opinion has changed over time it's not the clearest about that um, but certainly it's also just like you know like these people are well, not these people, because that sounds like a poor generalization. Some people, some particular people, are like, out there to destroy others? I'm like, oh my gosh, guys. Like, calm the fun. By the way, here's a little minigame. Shh, Jimbo! Ah. Pirates are camped nearby. Shall we try and sneak past? My gosh, man, you can be a bit quiet, okay? Okay, Ben, just remember to be really, really Oh, no, that's quiet. what I said. So you ready for this? The pirates have patrols out. But if you avoid the light from their lamps, you should be able to sneak past them from cover to cover. But whatever you do, make sure they don't see ya. The D-pad makes it seem like it's a mini game, but like weirdly, it's actually, you know, a controllable section. And it's actually like the whole linking element between like these two parts of the level. So uh, stay out of the light. You can still zap things, but uh. Oh. Jimbo, they saw you! They saw you! <laughs> coming down, coming down. Okay, okay. Maybe, maybe if we wait a few minutes, they'll settle down and you can try again. I feel like they shouldn't have the line saying like wait a few minutes, but I don't mind it. I think there's like some kind of clunkier sections where it's like, oh, it's a bit trickier than you'd expect. And obviously, it's like, why can't I just shoot them? shoot them for the rest of the game. Why? Like, it's so well lit. They're standing right next to these bright lanterns. But hey, you know what? Something different. It's something different. I have to applaud. It's, it's something different. So, yeah, to, to... Oh, yeah, yeah. This is the one where I'm like, uh bit tight because when he turns around it's like oh okay and I believe there's like a guy yeah yeah this guy it's like the timing is that yeah his gap is like kind of here you have to sort of judge where the end of his cone is bad. I don't know why this guy has like a little hidey hole given that like he's just doing like a figure eight. You don't need a hidey hole. And then that's it. You're good. And he gives you a pizza planet token because why not? Oh you did? You made it Jimbo. By the way, look what I found. Pretty cool, huh? And this is the only time you'll see this character. Yeah! Yeah! Barely looks like it even went anywhere but yeah, trust me we're on... There's a triangle here. 
Uh, triangle. It's cool, but uh, it's not a fancy effect. I, I wish it were a really fancy effect. But it's not, unfortunately. It's like, oh, you can look right up to it. It's, it's, just, it's just a wall. It's just an object right there. Jimmy! This is fantastic! This is so fantastic! This portal, this portal right here can get you into Flint's treasure chamber. So tell me, do you want to use the portal? Uh, sure, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go through the looking glass. The looking glass. Well, uh, in I go. <laughs> There's a little bit of crustiness on that effect, eh? Like, you know, you saw a bit of the extra level over there. But uh, here we are in the pirate. Pirate into the into Captain Flint's little treasure hunt trove. And look at that gold as far as the eye can see. The eye can't see very far, but uh, no, there's gold the whole way. And for some reason, there's tons of other pirates here. As well. But, uh, yeah, I feel like there's not much to say about this game. It definitely, like, I mean, it plays virtually like Muppet Monster Adventure, um, albeit you are lacking power-ups. This doesn't seem to be anywhere near as many power-ups. Um, you know, like the upgrades and stuff like that. Uh, we've done one boss fight, and we're gonna have another boss fight after this, but then it's like, that's it. This is driving level, and we're done. Uh, I, I know how I said, like, oh, this game is short, but then also here I am taking four hours to beat it, but I think it's also the fact of, like, walking around and picking up coins, walking around and picking up coins, and the actual variety of things you do is remarkably small. Whenever you have the ability to do some other thing, you have, like, a mini game or the other kind of driving levels, it's, like, they're short-lived. There's not a lot in them. Oh, I think we can't go okay, just yet. Uh, we'll get there. They're very short-lived, and uh, I think that's my biggest gripe about this game, is uh, everything about it is uh, not... It's not particularly, like, deep. Or, uh... Like... There's not a lot of stuff going on in it. Uh, and there's too much... Yeah, there's too much downtime in uh, trying to find... Like all the goodies, all the collectibles. Uh, I don't think we have to shoot up there. I'm trying to think, is there any other spots where I need that, uh, that, uh, that far shot? To... That being said, though, you know, for, all, for the criticisms that I said, it's like, yeah, it's... I mean, it's a competent game. If you want a collectathon Disney game, it certainly is indeed a collectathon Disney game. Um, and if you're gonna copy another game style, uh, like Spyro, hey, you know, it's relatively harmless. It does it pretty okay. Part of my croc brain is like, ah, yes, this will move. Yeah, okay, this is a bit of a bit, a bit here, where it's like you push one and then you can push the other. And that will help you get up onto this ledge. There you go. Um, I'm going to need the power diode, which I do not have, so I don't need to jump over there just yet. Oh look, there's a power diode over there. I think this, does this platform go the whole way? It does, ooh. I mean, this is the peak of your platforming experience. Just, uh, dodge the dodge the lasers. Now you can, you know, push a box. I think you can see what. I worry. I think I'm missing another platform because I am meant to go the other way. Hold on, one last one last jump. And, oh, 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 oh. Can't push that box back. One last jump, and we'll just see if uh, I was meant to do a glide, but I don't think it feels right. Nah, uh, not really. Okay. 
explore around a little more. Um, but yeah, uh, and speaking of explore around a little more, uh, let's have a, a brief chat about games I've played because I've actually played some games, finally. Um, so, the first one, the big one, uh, was getting back into Gran Turismo 4. I love Gran Turismo 4, and there was a newish retro achievement set, uh, a subset, if you will, uh, basically requiring the player to do some special challenges. Some of these special challenges involve driving one of the uh, Benz motor carriages from 1886 around one lap of the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Sounds simple enough, maybe a bit tedious because the car is slow. Um, it can't go up hills. You gotta snake the heck out of that. That is a hard one. There's some other ones as well, like uh, using in the fancy code, uh, which allows you to actually set which uh, opponents you drive against in the uh, arcade mode. That is a very fun little secret that wasn't even discovered until very, very recently. So, um, if you haven't ever played the game with that code, do that, by the way. It's actually a fun code that you can put in. Yeah, so that's an earlier section. And, uh, we'll experience, we'll, we'll count pretty soon. Uh, most of the other achievements involved uh, beating the races at 200 A-spec points, or potentially just close to 200. Like, some of them are like the the, the, tr the pickup truck uh, cup, for example. You cannot get to, like, 200 A-spec points unless you're using that uh, that Dodge Ram that has the glitch, basically. So it's just like, hey, you know, 100 is fine. Um, trying to push yourself to get uh, 200 A-spec points or a high amount of A-spec points is very difficult in that game. It's all about, you know, making sure your car is performant enough, like it actually ticks the box. That's a very weird looking over that ledge there, but that is like, you know, part of the level. Basically. Um, but like, yeah, dropping your car's like performance, not using many upgrades, uh, using worse tires, a handful of them required you to basically use like the, the, you know, normal tires, not sports tires, and the feeling in the game when you do that, it's like a very interesting one. You'll never often put yourself in that scenario because most of the cars you buy have sports tires, sports medium tires, and this is like, nope, nope. You gotta put on, you gotta put on the normal tires, man. Put on the normal tires. So, a very interesting one. Uh, the other kind of part of the, the subset involved doing the uh, endurance races that uh, were excluded from the main set. So most of the races were like at most two hours long. Uh, the endurance races in the game involved three 24 hour real time events. They did not implement a day night cycle in the game. It feels very odd, but uh, hey, it's a subset. We're gonna show some flexy achievements and these are certainly the most flex achievements out there because it shows that you have no life like I do. Or not have a life. That's whatever, so. Um, but I love the game so much, I'm willing to put myself through it. Uh, technically, again, I've done it before, but I did it again here, and the answer is yeah, I get it. Yeah. Particularly, I don't drive, like in Gran Turismo, you will drive it in a very arcadey way. You will particularly not, like, you know, you'll cut corners. You'll do the Fuji Speedway 1000 kilometers. It's like, yeah, no, heck no, I'm not doing that shit probably. Uh, I wasn't paying attention. I hope they spawned a box or a platform over there. Or it was further back, and I'm, I'm just padding for time at this point. Um, and so is this platform. Uh... So there's a lot of that, but Gran Turismo 4 is such an extravagant game that despite me, you know, growing up with it, really, really loving it, I've never experienced the game in quite this way. And I really, really thank the the set author, um, whose name I will never be able to, to pronounce, because uh, it sounds like I'm about to say, <laughs> say like a slur or something. But no, I, I love you. I'm going to say it anyways. Is it Saxon or Suxin or... I love you, man. I love you. Your stuff is great. You showed me great, like, principles and stuff when, when having my own sets. Love you, my man. It's great. Um, and you give me an excuse to play more Gran Turismo 4. Can't thank you enough on that. 
Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, it's, it, it's good fun. So if you enjoy Gran Turismo 4, uh, see if you can gift... Oh, that as well, yeah. That. See if you can give the subset a, uh, a run through as well. Oh, it was the platforms at the end. That's what I unlocked. Which is actually the way to continue on the level, and that's why I hadn't actually done it, so... Yeah, checkpoint. Checkpoint. I, listen, I, I, my brain like blanked out, I saw it, and then I didn't like click in my head, I was like, did I just activate that? So... There you go, you can shoot that. What does that do? It raises platforms near him. Such a strange ending area as well, because like this, again, this is it. This is the culmination, the final level of platforming. And it's like, yeah, I mean, it's got more pits. But none of it feels like it's particularly throwing you off the deep end. Just like level 3 didn't feel like it threw you off the deep end. Level 1 feels entirely like a big, long tutorial level. And yet, like, somehow we gotta get up to this point where it's like, yeah, the player is confident enough to... Uh, Well, I don't know, actually, like... It, I don't know, it just feels like a middle-of-the-road difficulty kind of kind of level. It hasn't really pushed me hard enough, and it doesn't feel like it's really introducing enough new elements that I'm kind of like, oh, you know, wow. Part of me thinks that I was doing this ending wrong. Like, there's gotta be something with this box. I'm going nuts over this box. This feels like a sequence break. But that box, like, uh, you know what I mean? It's like that box wasn't going the whole way. Oh, well, so. Uh, another game I played was uh, Choro Q! Uh, exclamation mark for the GameCube. That's right, in the past week, Retro Achievements has enabled support for the GameCube. I had been paying attention along the wings, uh, but I personally was not developing any of the GameCube games uh, for the set. Uh, it was all pretty self-contained. I think a lot of people had already... I, like, I, I think when they started to do it, I had just become a full dev, and I was like, hey, you know, a lot of people had kind of claimed stuff, and I'm like, hey, you know, I'll just work on the games that I, I know a bit more of. I don't know too many GameCube games, like, I, I mean, I know of them, I've played a few of them, but you know what I mean, it's like, I think some people know way more than I do about them, and they're very enthusiastic. A lot of people in Retro Achievements picked up GameCube titles, and, uh, like, it's one of the, if not the, it is the largest initial rollout, and almost all the games you can think of from the GameCube, except for Metro Prime 2, Cough Cough, um, also Star Fox Adventures and Cubivore, I noticed. I haven't, haven't had set to finish yet. It might be in progress still. Uh, I know Metro Prime 2 definitely is. But, uh... But, yeah, no. Lots and lots and lots of games. Lots and lots of sets. Um, hopefully spurring a lot of interest in the site, but also, uh... Ooh, let's not get too much interest, you know what I mean? Like, like don't, don't get the eyes of, uh... Copyright holders involved. Just know... We're just doing it for fun, and it's not meant to detract <laughs> any any revenue. You must uh, have uh, some metal to have made it this far, lad. But are you up to face our final challenge? Dude, I love pirates. Bring it on, you old scatterwag! I'm ready for you. Oh my gosh! Stop yelling, my bro. So how do you do this? You gotta. Uh, it's it's the the popcorn crystals kind of thing. Actually, it's not. There's a bunch of fuses, and you're meant to put them all out. But some of them are a lot closer to the, you know, the end points than others. Just gotta ground pound them, basically. Ooh. As long as you're kind of listening out. Ooh. As long as you're listening out, you'll spot them. Oh, that one's a bit close, ain't it? That one's a bit close. Kind of reminds me of the, uh, the, the Ski Lost Badlands. Kind of watch out for the dinosaur. Oh my gosh. It's 
quite forgiving though, isn't it? Well, shiver me, shiver me timbers. I guess this means you might be space worthy after all, but not worthy of all me treasure. Perhaps a small trinket, though. Oh, we'll still seal that, anyways. Uh, so anyway, I played Char Q, uh, the uh, the GameCube version, um, which was one of the uh, initial sets, and um, I'd never played this one in particular before. Uh, sorry, it's it's called Road Trip, the arcade version, but it's just called Char Q! Exclamation mark. It's the only GameCube Char Q, so that simplifies what that is. Um, the arcade version, in its name, is indeed correct. It is. A very, very standard and straightforward pick up the, you know, do the cups kind of game. There's not a lot to really say about that other than, like, like I love how it's like, I've gotten everything, but I'm gonna go back, redeem the gems. Um, there's not a lot to really say about how its, it's gameplay works, and this is a bit unfortunate. It's actually the least exciting Choro Q game I've played. Um, the tracks themselves are all sort of, like, you're like miniature cars in a location, and you're like in a, you know, a, a bedroom, and you're like tiny, or in a, uh, like a backyard in one of them. You're on like this kind of tiny highway, I don't know what's up with that, I guess. Um, you're on a little snowy mountain, and it's not small. It's like, okay, sure. Um, each, uh, cup takes place across each environment. Where you'll play exclusively short versions, and then you'll do the second cup and it's medium versions, and you'll do the last one's long versions of the tracks. There's a decent amount of, like, you know, different side cuts and whatever in the tracks to make the, the three layouts seem decently distinct, but not only decently. I think the locations are sort of a bit of a, eh, you know, been there, done that. Um, and that's kind of it. Like, once you get gold in those three, it's like, oh, then you've got reverse cups, and it's actually reverse. It's, it's properly, like, the track but backwards as opposed to uh, like just mirror cup where it's kind of the same track. A genuine relic um, of nautical history. Deposit but it's that, there's another mode as well where you do customer. one track at a Here's time. One piece of treasure. But certified by the pirate other than that, it's kind of it. You'll earn authentic. some money, uh, buy some upgrades. None of the upgrades particularly feel broken, but you definitely, you know, you need the statistic benefit to continue on. So there's like a little bit of that kind of grinding aspect, but not too much. Um, but yeah, like, the controls feel very kind of slippery. Your car will always tend to slide if you steer too hard. And, uh, you know, if you do that, you lose speed. So it's like, oh, I just kind of tap it. And it's like, yep, that's just it for the whole game. That's what you do. You don't have to change up your strats too much for different tracks or different, you know, parts. It's kind of, yeah, it's pretty normal. Um... It definitely is a little weird and floaty because you have a jump button, and the jump button is also your, like, save yourself if you roll button. And you'll find that you just roll all the time off ledges and things like that in ways that the AI don't really do. It feels a little odd and unfair. Um, but, yeah. Uh, Jimmy, this planet's gonna explode! Ah. If you finish what you need to do, then we'd better get out of here. Nah, I've not finished. I want to live with my gold forever. But yeah, that's the end of that level. That's the end of jumping. We don't have to jump anymore in the whole game. Actually, no, you have to jump on the driving level. But yeah, no, that's it. That's all that is. So now we have a boss fight. Two out of two. He was like nice just a moment ago. And now he's mean. What have you done to him? You've made him mean. How could you? So, uh, yeah, it's fall, but treasure planet's falling down. But, uh, silver is still the deadliest thing here, so... He's gonna... 
hexagon heat you, apparently. You do a bit of a dance. And the game's at 60 frames a second for some reason for a brief moment. This is a bit of a weird fight. He basically shoots different kind of colors. You have to... Hit them like twice with the matching color in a row so hold on and then it explodes and also that that shockwave will damage you it's kind of annoying if you're doing the hitless achievements or retro achievements um but yeah just two in a row of the same color and uh, it will explode oh come on there you go Ooh. Posture check, by the way. Oh, oh, come on, I need a red one. There you go. Once you're done with this phase, uh, I'm pretty sure he throws stuff at you. No, no, you gotta do a dance. You gotta do the dance, the dance is important. And now he'll throw things at you. So, uh, yeah, watch out. Some hexagons are safe and some are not. Eventually, one of them breaks. Maybe? Maybe? There you go. That one you can use to... Oh, come on. You can throw it at it. And then you get zapped. Nice and easy. Rinse and repeat, but uh, use up a bit more space on the board. bit of a waiting game with a boss fight, isn't it? Also, the background is really, really low LOD. Like, look at that, man. It's not a particularly impressive looking boss fight because it's like, ah, all the detail is like, not there. And most of the field is empty. I think that's just a generic, like, LOD per distance kind of calculation they're doing on. But like, there's not many like, vertices in the scene. Not to say that many Spyro boss fights have, uh, detailed sceneries. Oh. Yeet! Well, he then gets a bit upset about, uh, you zapping him all the time, so he makes you jump, and you do a dance, and now your platform is really small, so he decides to just stand at the top of the ladder, I guess. So all you gotta do is, uh, crawl left and right. Uh, he'll always do, like, this kind of sweeping motion, so I find the, oh, so I find the best course is just to, like, climb in the opposite direction, because it's a little tricky sometimes to, you know, to grab the, the blue. Sometimes it's a little tricky, but if, as long as you, you know, climb in the opposite direction. Oh. You generally have a- oh my gosh. You'll generally have an option. But I would- there you go. Oh. So you throw it back up at him and he's like, ouch! It blows up by the way, the blue gems blow up. Uh, successive rounds will- maybe have a few more rocks kind of it. it. Makes it- <laughs> the ladder makes it look like you crawl up, but no, you just chill down here. He can't get you. He's just shooting the top and making rocks fall down at you. Uh... Well, not quite. We're almost there. So, yeah, I don't know if I could really recommend Char Q on the GameCube the Retro chip instead is also a little cruel because uh, once you've done basically everything, you have <laughs> you made him cry. Once you've done basically everything, the only thing left to do is like or like you know when you bought all the equipment and you come first in every cup, then you've basically got to come first in at least the three cups. You don't have to do the reverse versions for all 100 car chassis in the game. All 100 of them. And there's an achievement on every single one of them. And I'm like, man... It's not a particularly long game. But that adds so much more time and you're literally doing the same thing. 
And there he goes. Forever. Nah, this is our last level. So, yeah, yeah. This game is about to be on the ends right here. We just got one more, like, kind of driving level. I don't mind these driving levels, and I actually kind of appreciate that they've spent enough time putting them in. But they're a bit... Mm, there could be more to them. So this one, again, it's kind of the same. You do steer maybe a bit more aggressively than you're used to, but the same rules apply. You, know, you go around, you pick up some, some gems. This is going to be very anticlimactic if, if I uh, don't get the, the fast time while doing this. As well. Oh, not that right. Not that right. It feels kind of odd as well, the, the whole, like, going for all the gems, because it's like, again, you only had to use your money in the very first two levels. Money is entirely irrelevant after the first, like, what, yeah, the actual 300 gems. You're forced to pick up most of it, you know, in the first level, because you have to pay someone in order to exit the level. But then you could proceed to just do almost entirely... Oh, and I'm dead again. Uh, you could proceed to do almost entirely these levels. You, you know, your choice of which other level you want to do, just to get the remaining tokens, but... It's kind of it. It's kind of ordinary? Not like... Not ordinary. I don't know how to phrase it. It's a bit too forgiving and it doesn't demand a lot out of the player. And I guess that's my biggest gripe. Uh, presentation wise, it's like, yeah, it's PS1. Looks alright. But it's PS1. And this came out very late in the PS1 cycle, so it's kind of like, you're now naturally going to have to compare this game against Ratchet and Clank. It came out the same year, but it just looks like Spyro 1. It's not ugly looking, but it is entirely hampered down by the hardware of like, you just cannot, like, push that much through this, so... Uh, I am also gonna knock the music because... Oh, yeah. I did take the inside a bit too generously there, but I don't know if that was... Like, a bit... Uh, a bit of an odd corner. Okay. That's also gonna be kind of awkward. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm gonna have to rip on the music because it's like, man, where's the variety? Perhaps the same thing could be said about Muppet Monster Adventure. Perhaps. It's like, you're gonna compose pirate music and almost every song feels the same. I got a lot of free time or what? Like, geez. Picking up tons. This music doesn't feel like final boss or final level music as well, you know? I think it's because it's been the same music every single time. So. That probably contributes to it. Uh, so. And so it's always a tough gig doing a licensed game and it's like, how closely can you stick to the plot? You know, because you gotta. You, your, your schedule is a lot shorter on a licensed game at these times. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to get those coins. There we go. We got a little portal at the end as well. And then you still get judged on time. Oh, did I do it? No, probably not. This is another... Yeah, no, definitely not. Dang it, we gotta do it one last time. One last time. But don't worry, the game just ends. He's just, he's just back and is wearing a suit. <laughs> I 
I, I I assume like you know this is the the happy the happy ending at the end of the the movie because it's been way too long since I've seen it, but these movie clips don't really describe and the it's credits already. These movie clips don't describe the game in too great a detail. I'm not sure if buying this game exactly encourages me to watch the movie a ton. Like I mean, there's bits in it, but it's also Yeah. Yeah, I don't... There's not a lot to say about it. Kind of just, you know, it happens. You know, I gotta I got think of something a bit more inventive to say. I think it's a, it's a decently emblematic game of the rush of uh, licensed games, and especially once you start getting to this time period, they still require the stricter deadlines. So it's like, these are devs who are like, oh, we've got an existing game engine. Like, we can reuse a lot of the Muppet Monster Adventure stuff we'd built, and maybe that's based on some earlier stuff they had made. That's usually the case. Usually devs aren't on inventing brand new stuff for these license games. Oh my gosh, the, the, the building in the back there is just gone because you're not meant to be looking back there. What a shame, what a shame there. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I guess, yeah, yeah, in the grand scheme of Disney tie-ins, or really any licensed tie-ins, I'd say it's, uh, it's competent. I mean, it is definitely a game, and I don't think there's anything particularly egregious about it, but it does kind of pad out its runtime. I think you could definitely spot there's not enough content. So it just kind of goes, ah, pick up all the coins, pick them all up. And uh, once you do it, it's like four hours and I didn't feel like I really did a lot of things. That definitely sucks, but. Now people that, who probably owned this at the time, like someone's probably going to be watching back through this video going, oh man, I love your, your, your commentary and stuff like that. Uh, and you're a very handsome individual. Uh, here's my number. Um, but I can't believe you ripped on Treasure Planet for the PS1. This was my childhood game. And a part of me is like, is this a bad... Sorry. How do I put this? If you had this game as a child, I, like, I don't think there's any judgment, because it's like, you had a game as a child. Your parents will buy you stuff because they think that's something you're interested in. They're not gonna, you know... A lot of the time, your parents don't necessarily know what games are exactly good and which ones are bad. And a lot of the time, it's like, oh, it's based on the movie that you enjoy. I will get it for you. Um, this, I think one other thing to note, and it's especially around this time period, renting video games was still in its heyday. Once you started really getting into the PS2 generation and you had games really require like long loading, or long like kind of sessions and memory cards. Um, hey, we got actual voice talent, by the way, on all these. Uh, but Greg with two Gs, Greg with one G. Oh, sorry, three Gs and two Gs. Ooh. And they only get credits at the end. What happens after you sit through, sat through the credits? Do you get anything good or are you just kind of chilling? I think we're just chilling. Okay, it just looped. It just looped. Okay, we'll go back. We'll do the one race and I got to wrap up my thoughts pretty quick about this. Um, and I could save the game, just in case. Um, but, uh, I, I think a lot of the, the, you know, like, games like this, they work the best when rented. It's like, hey, I watched the movie and I want to play the game. My local Video Easy or Blockbuster has the game available. And I can just, like, rent it for the weekend. And it's like, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a four-hour game. It might be a little longer if you, you know... If if you take your time, it might be a little quicker if you don't care about collecting everything. But you just find your fun over a weekend and you call it a day. And that's kind of how a lot of these games really... I, 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 like, I'm not saying... I don't know exactly how they get their money from the rental market. Like, does Video Easy go up? This person checked out Treasure Planet. Time to give Disney two bucks this month. Like, that kind of stuff. Uh, oops. Uh... 
but certainly I, you know, it makes a lot more sense than A, going out and buying this game, even though it was also available to buy, but I don't think the value is there. Not to say all licensed games are like that, but this one is. But yeah, around 2002, that's when you started getting like much, much longer games. Renting was less and less popular, but also renting in general, like for movies and I was going to say CD sort of went through a bit of a rut because it's like, oh, well, you can't just rent CDs because people are just going to burn the CDs. They're just going to copy the CD or rip the CDs. They're going to take the content off and copy it to the computer. So renting CDs went out the window. Renting movies sort of was uh, worryingly close to that as well. So a lot of the rental stores sort of went out of business and then especially people had the internet. I could just download the, the stuff I wanted. Uh, through both proper and improper means, so sort of died off with that. But uh, was it necessarily the fault of the games themselves? I don't know. Uh, maybe because games got longer and longer, and I think a lot of people wanted to own them for longer to complete them longer. There's no like, for example, take a take a modern game, and it's like oh, it takes like 20 hours to beat because it's got like tons of stuff. And stuff is Cyberpunk a game I would rent? Nah, not really. So, that's probably where I think it went. Is the game industry worse because of that? Uh, no, I think the game industry is much, much worse because of a sort of modern, long-form exploitation. Not exploitation, it's like a deeply negative thing, but more as like a, the games themselves want to keep getting the most out of the players they have and this has turned into games that are more attraction you know time sinks than actual you know, experiences and you know, things that people that creative directors love it's like nah they just do their own thing um, that's a very long tangent from its treasure planet I'm not exactly thinking that this is like some like, you know, oh, you know, I put all my heart and soul in Treasure Planet. I don't know. Maybe if I, ah, oh, I would love to speak to a developer on this game. If you, if you worked on this game, please say hi. I would love to have a chat. I'm sorry I've been ripping into this game this whole time because I don't think it's necessarily the work of the developers. Sorry, like the, like the developers, oh, they suck. Ah. I think it's just like, you know, you do your best. I don't think any, any of these games are like, they didn't try. But I think it, there's probably some like details about the project itself which is the reason why I'm playing the thing that I have in front of me as opposed to you know, something with more content or different kinds of ideas or things like that I believe Disney got very strict on what was in their games at some points uh well, it was 345 right yeah, yeah. It wasn't 3.30, was it? I'm gonna die if it was 3... Yeah, okay. Okay, we're good. And that's it! That's everything. And then we're gonna get the final cutscene again, which I gotta edit out again. <laughs> and then, uh, credits. And that's it. That's the game. What do you get for getting everything in the game? Well, we'll see. We'll see in a hot second. But it's really, like, not much effort to... 100%, I'll tell you that. So, quit the game. We're all good. Go back to the main menu, which... Do you have to... Yeah, you have to load it. You gotta load that main menu. It's not gonna load itself. You gotta wait, wait for this still. And uh, we have uh, a gallery. So, loading your save file. That is complete. Either of these ones. Just, uh, Played through this game twice, I guess. And you can uh, look at the movies. Individual movie clips. Take a guess, by the way. You don't get names or icons or whatever. You just gotta guess what the movie clips are. We have backgrounds as well, which we'll scan through. Oh boy, they take their sweet time to load though. But hey, you got some 256 by 224 concept art. Which I'm all for. I do enjoy some good concept art. I love the music just start stopping as well, every time. 
Some of this concept art may be specifically for stuff in the game. Some of it may just be, hey, you know, it's, it was in the movie. They particularly like their ships. And I guess it's a pirate movie, you know, it kind of makes sense. Don't do the ships wrong, but... As someone who doesn't exactly have, like, that much of an attachment to Treasure Planet itself, this is a curious kind of expedition for me, because... What are my feelings towards this movie? I don't know. All I can say is, uh, it didn't make money at the time. You have some caricatures With pencil icons, man. They, I think they just ran out of icons. Oh yeah, how do we convert character design into PlayStation 1? And the answer is... You know, they tried? They tried? Most of these are generally alright? This poor guy doesn't even appear in the game at all, other than standing right there. This one is like, come on, he's already in 3D. Yeah, it's like, it's like, there's, there's an attempt. I don't think, like, anything is unrecognizable from what it's meant to be as well. But, so, <laughs> this is a bit of a stretch, but he's also pretty small on screen, so. That probably explains it all. For this, however, I don't know, man. I don't know. And there he is. The guy. Dude, it'd be kind of embarrassing if, like, one of these looks really, really off. Yeah, the two boss fights just seems like a very odd, just kind of, like, artifact. It's like, at the end of everything, and you had two boss fights. That's all your bonuses, by the way. But just before we leave, uh, I want to get copyright struck. We have both a movie trailer, which I think you've probably seen the movie trailer, and the music video to the song! Which seems very, like, bizarre. Like, I mean, it's got, like, some visual references to the movie. You got some ships. But, uh, yeah, no, this is the jam. This is why you buy these games. Because then you got the song. And a kind of lamish PS1 quality. Is this mono as well? I think it is mono. Dude, I love, like, early 2000s and late 90s freaking, like, songs. Just get an original song, get, like, some band somewhere to make a song for your movie. And it's, it's, it's just so removed. It just speaks to the time period that the movie came out in. I don't know this band, I'm sorry as well. Or is it just the singer from a band? Let's look it up, shall we? Treasure Planet Song, because I forgot the song name. I'm Still Here, Jim's Theme. There he is, by John... Oh boy. Reznik? Reznik's? Rez... Rez... Rez Reznik's. There's two Zs. That really throws me off. Uh, he's the, uh, front man of the Goo Goo Dolls, but I don't know if this is... Oh, it's a duo. It's a duo. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Half of a duo. And it's got that wonderful early 2000s just pop rock kind of sound. And he's running through the Matrix, apparently. Unfortunately, this is all going to be blurred out and quiet, so I, all I would just say is, Hey, you know, if you're, if you're looking at YouTube, just, uh, yeah, you know, try and look up the music video on the side. It probably exists. Uh, reading Wikipedia, he was picked to write the song for the movie because it was believed he could relate with Treasure Planet's main character, Jim, and his rebel with a cause, Angst. Directors Ron Clements and John Musker stated on the film's audio commentary that they attempted a scene in the film using the song Iris by Rezeznik's oh, this is his name, uh, band the Goo Goo Dolls. Referring to Jim, Reznik said, It was easy to relate to Jim, you know. I felt a lot like that when I was his age. 
I'm Still Here is one of two songs on the Treasure Planet soundtrack performed by him, the other being Always Know Where You Are. It was sung by Resnick during the film, but performed by BB Mac on the soundtrack. Oh my gosh. It's been ages. I don't know. I always love like when artists are like, yeah, I relate to this like rebellious character. It's like they find, I don't know. I'm, I'm so cynical. I'm so like cynical of a guy. Also rip this guy's house. Ouch. <laughs> Dude, imagine having a guy singing a son, you know? But, uh, yeah, no, this, <laughs> there's a part of me that it's like, I, I always struggle to, like, relate to characters in the sense of, like, feeling exactly like them so that I can pull off this, like, very emotional performance. I'm like, ah, uh, maybe if I was an actor, maybe more so, but I've never aspired to be an actor, so maybe that's why. <laughs> he is being chased by the spider guy. Uh, and, and then he, what was it? Everything was the same except all different. Something like that. I don't know. From the motion picture soundtrack. Well, if I watched the movie again, then maybe I'd remember that song. But uh, you know what I don't remember? Uh, the end of the stream. I would like to thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this or you didn't enjoy it, doesn't really matter too much. You can follow on Twitch where I stream at 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time every Monday and only Monday, once a week. Uh, I'll be playing some other different game next week. We'll see what it is. I don't know. Uh, if you missed part of the stream or you missed part of any other stream in the past, uh, you can't find them on Twitch because Twitch likes deleting VODs too quick. But if you're on YouTube, which you probably are on YouTube because Twitch chat was tight, uh, quiet today, then, uh, yeah, no, just subscribe. You'll see the VODs. They'll be there within 24 hours of upload, so that's all good. Uh, and if you want to see silly ramblings, you can follow me at uh, on the 30verse at m.bandow.com, where I say silly things sometimes. Um, that's kind of it. What a, what a curious game, I guess. It's curious. I don't have a ton to say. It just kind of just kind of happens, but hopefully as well, uh, people are open-minded about things. I don't know. I don't want to see people rip on people on the internet. Everyone wants to say, come by. Oh, can we get along? You know, that kind of stuff. I don't know. I'm rambling. My brain's mush. <laughs> Have a good night, people. See ya.